Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about a game library that if you're a regular channel, you no doubt have heard about it, because I am a big fan, and whenever there's a new release, I cover it. If not, well, you're in for a treat, because you're about to be introduced to one of the easiest to use, but very capable games libraries uh, for the C and C++ programming language, and that is a library called Raylib. Now, this is an open source project. It's growing in uh, by leaps and bounds, actually. They won an Epic Mega Grant, for example, and they've won some awards from Google, which is definitely quite nice. If you want to check out Raylib, it is available at raylib.com, which I guess makes a certain amount of sense. Now, this was actually built on a couple of things that I really was a big fan of, and for many of you are going to be from literally before your times. First one is Borland's BGI, which is a Borland graphic interface, a very straightforward, easy way to draw graphics from back in, I believe it was called the 90s. And then on top of that was the XNA framework, Microsoft's amazing game development framework that they went and pissed away. Uh, those two things were really kind of formative in how I uh, like libraries. They were some of the best earliest, easy to understand examples I saw out there. And the next question you may have is what exactly does Raylib do for you? Well, it does a lot for you, actually. It runs on a number of different platforms. As you can see, Windows, Linux, Mac, uh, oh, I forget which version of Linux that is, FreeBSD, uh, Raspberry Pi, Android, uh, HTML5, so on and so forth. So you basically on all the platforms you care about. And the next thing that comes up is what about programming languages? Well, there are bindings for over 50 programming languages at this point in time. So basically, uh, if you're um, using a language, chances are there is a binding for it including Nim, Boo, C Sharp, obviously, Lua, um, Hacks, Ren, Odin, uh, so on and so forth. So there are language bindings for so many different programming languages out there for Raylib. So it doesn't really matter what programming language you want to use, uh, there are bindings for it. That's one of the advantages of being a C library. It's very, very portable. Another thing about Raylib is it's very, very modular. Uh, most of the libraries are single file header only uh, with no external dependencies. So Wow, just about lost my voice there. So you, you can use them in really easy circumstances. You can use just one thing. So if you just want to use uh, the Ray Math library, for example, and you want to just write your own for everything else, you can do so. Uh, the OpenGL libraries, you want to use them on their own, you can do so. Um, we got physics and so on and so forth. So each one of these little uh, modular libraries can actually be used independently. And again, oftentimes they're single file headers only, making them really easy to include in your project. And there are a number of tools out there as well, tools for creating GUIs, font dealing with and so on and so forth there is a very active community if you want to go ahead check it out on discord uh, as you hear some of their highlight features of raylib include there's no external dependencies all the required libraries are included with raylib makes it really easy to get up and started and that's one of those problems with a lot of beginners working with crc plus plus is it's built on a build system from the 1970s and it shows so not having to deal with that crap is very good multiple platforms written in c c99 version using uh Pascal case, camel case notation, uh, hardware accelerator with OpenGL, uh, unique OpenGL abstraction layer, RLGL, powerful fonts module, outstanding texture support, full 3D support in there as well, flexible material system, you can animate a 3D model support, a shader support, including model shaders and post-processing shaders, powerful math module, um, audio loading and playing with streaming support, VR stereo rendering, a huge number of examples. And they're not kidding. When it comes down to examples, there are there are an absolute ton of them. Run in your browser. So anything you want to do with Raylib, uh, you probably will find an example showcasing how to go ahead and do it. Uh, another thing that I really like about Raylib is just the, the simplicity of it. So if we come on back here, you'll find the cheat sheet. Really, this is all you need. Print this off. This is all the documentation you need. Realistically, it is. It's got a number of functions around different themes. So the cursor, drawing, uh, window-related handling. Uh, timing, uh, miscellaneous, so on and so forth. All of the functions are basically described here. And then we get into the various different modules. And this is all you need to know. This is documentation enough for you to use Raylib. And that makes it really quite simple. Now, on, on the top of this, there's also, um, again, a number of examples out there that'll walk you through the process. But this is the simplicity of Raylib. You can grab it as a PDF if you wish. Just print this off. It used to be actually back in the days. So we're, once again, uh, the Borland graphic interface, those libraries, or uh, OWL, or um, MFC. You used to print off these giant posters, or, or they came with them, these posters you put on your wall with all of this kind of information on it. This is kind of a throwback, and I appreciate it. It makes it very simple uh, to get into and experiment with and learn Raylib. 
So now on to the actual Raylib 4.0, what it's all about. Well, you can see here, uh, there's a lot going on with this release. A lot of it is st uh, stability and uh, naming conventions, cleaning things up. You can basically consider this a long-term support version. Uh, so if you want to... Um, start a project that you're going to ultimately ship and you don't want the API changing or being changed on you, you want the most stable bug-free version out there, Raylib 4.0 is that release. And as part of it, 130 closed issues for a total of 10, oh, sorry, 10,000, uh, 1,030, 550 commits since, 20 functions were added to the API, 60 functions were added to the RLGL API, 40 functions renamed, reviewed, redesigned, and there are 60 new contributors. So the 275 people are contributing to the Raylib project right now, which is pretty awesome, actually. Uh, so in terms of highlights here, a number of things for naming consistencies and coherencies uh, throughout the project. And that's always nice, especially when uh, it is one of those projects where you're going to a lot of times work by in, like intuition or intuitiveness. And you, you can be guessing what the function name is. If it doesn't match to the casing that you you know use for 99% of everything else, it's, a, it's kind of a roadblock. So that's been fixed up. New experimental keyword here, uh, event automation system. So... Uh, it allows you to record input events and then replay them. So you could use this to create cutscenes, for example, uh, AI training, that kind of stuff. Interesting new addition. Another nice one is custom game loop control. Every game, every game engine, everything out there has a game loop of some form. Uh, basically, this is what runs every frame. Your, your game's logic is handled here. So things like updating physics, handling input, drawing graphics, they all happen in a loop that happens over and over and over again. And they've given you, um, you can get fine-tuned control of it and so when you compile Raylib you use the support custom frame controls intended for advanced users that want to control the event polling and the timing or the timing uh, mechanisms of their game uh, the Raylib GL library 4.0 completely decoupled from the platform la layer and now it's a single file header only again this is always nice because it makes it just easier to work with the library additionally support for 4.3 has been added uh, OpenGL 4.3 that is uh, supporting compute shaders and shader storage buffer objects or S SBO. Uh, RLGL can now be used as a complete standalone portable library to wrap several OpenGL versions. So again, if you want, if you're creating your own game engine and you want to have like an abstraction layer for um, OpenGL, you can use RLGL, just ignore the rest. They even decoupled from their own math libraries. So that's pretty cool. Um, nice move there. Speaking of math, uh, got some changes there. Functions are self-contained. No function uses other Ray math functions inside. Requiring uh, Required code is directly re-implemented. Function input parameters are always received by value. Functions always a result variable. Angles are always in radians. Uh, and then Ray GUI 3.0. This is an immediate mode GUI library for basically drawing things up on screen, the buttons and so on. Uh, has been updated new version, embedding the icon collection and adding... I'm assuming this is multiple improvements. It has been uh, simplified constrained for a better focus on its task. Uh, the parser, new tools to parse, uh, raylib.h, tokenize, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Zig and Odin official support. Uh, I think I've actually covered both of these programming languages. Or actually, no, Odin's on my to-do list. Oops, spoiler. Uh, but I have covered the Zig uh, language. Odin is coming up. So uh, more language support there is always nice. And then we got, interestingly enough, support for the Vox, magical voxel, 3D voxel format is been added in, new uh, Raylib game template repo shared, new uh, functions across the board, and so on and so forth. So if you want to get into like the fine-tuned changes, there's a lot that happened here. So Raylib 4.0 is a pretty substantial re release. Uh, if you're interested in getting started with Raylib, well, the way I personally like the best is using um, VC Package, and I've actually done a tutorial on using VC Package. Uh, so this is more if you're more of a an intermediate level developer, you've already got Visual Studio installed or Visual Studio Code installed, uh, and you want to kind of create your project from scratch, but you don't want to deal with the pain in the ass that is working with C and C++ libraries, VC Package makes life easy for you. And I would showcase it today. One of the downsides to VC Package, though, is that it's maintained by the VC Package people, so they're not up to date yet, because this release just happened yesterday. So that's not there yet. Uh, but once it is updated, this tutorial, this video right here, will walk you through setting up Raylib using VC Package. But what we're going to show you is the ultimate easy mode. So we're back here at raylib.com, like so. And just come on in here, do download. Uh, say, no thanks, bring me to my stuff. Now you can see there's there's installs uh, for um, different compilers. Compilers are included. So the uh, MingW, the TCC, and the ZIG compiler. I'll do the smallest one, 34 megabytes in size. We'll print that download down. And I'm, I'm being brave here. I'm actually showing you a live uh, install 
and this is just gonna work. So I have faith here. Uh, we're gonna go through all the Microsoft trying to scare the crap out of you. It's a new executable, has been downloaded a lot, so they'll say it's unsafe. It's, it's not. Again, they're gonna tell you it's unsafe again. It's not, and we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna walk through the setup. Uh, install, and now this is one of those things that I do not like with the default Raylib installer, is it dumps it in your C directory. I really wish they gave you the option at least picking a subfolder, uh, but that is it. Raylib is now installed. Uh, does it not add, I don't think it actually adds anything. No, it doesn't. All right, so what we're going to do is navigate to C drive, like so, and then we're going to find Raylib right here, and now, what we want to do is go into NPP, and this is a programming language called Notepad++. And this is actually an editor already been set up uh, here. Let me pause and get it into a mode that you guys don't cry about. All right, enable dark mode, and done. Now, Notepad++ doesn't do an amazing job of it, I do have to say right there, but now you can probably see things a little bit better. Uh, it is a code editor, nice, it works pretty well. What you'll find is you do get, uh, text, um, you get auto completion of the library. It is already pre-configured to run Raylib stuff. So you can see here for the examples, you just press F6, no worrying about anything else. You basically just let it run and the project will run for you. So there you go. You're up and running with Raylib. That's one of those things I really love about this is it's just so easy to get up and going. And then if we come back here, you're going to find there are a number of examples right here. Again, literally just pick one. So if you want to see uh, VR, oh, it's here, split screen. So we'll do split screen here. So core split screen example. We'll just open it up. Code's right here. Again, pretty straightforward. You wanna run it, just hit F6 and then okay. And it's already pre-configured. There's a compiler there for you. So you need nothing else. You literally just need this. Um, you open it up in the editor right here. I don't know where it is. All right, did you work? Hmm, so this ran and exited. So maybe I just picked a bad example there. Let's go pick one other one. So you can find there are a ton of examples here uh, that'll walk you through most of what you need to know to get started with Raylib. Other than that, that cheat sheet should get you there. And let's just run that one, see if this one works for us. There we go. So you can see uh, keyboard control here, like so, and simple platformer style example. And you can see kind of how simple it is to actually create a code like this. It's a very straightforward, easy to use library. Again, if you're looking to use it more in um, uh, you know, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, or if you're on another platform like Linux or Mac, uh, this pre-configured setup isn't going to work for you. Uh, my personal preference, I do, like, um, I do like the VC package option. So again, I will link this down below. Uh, VC package is available uh, cross-platform as well. It's unfortunately, you gotta wait for them to set it up. But again, this is a very simple and straightforward uh, C library. Uh, so you can literally just go to the GitHub repository um, and clone the code. You know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just grab it like that, git clone it down and build it yourself. And on that topic as well, uh, there is full documentation on all these things. So if you're on say Mac OS or Linux, uh, there's walkthroughs on how to build things yourself. Uh, ditto for, again, if you're using Linux, all details there. And in terms of documentation, you're also gonna find Raylib has uh, nice documentation on the various different pieces there. So if you're interested in uh, the input system, for example, come on in here and you can see how input is used. And again, it is all very modular. So a lot of these things that you can uh, pull out and use in other uh, projects, if you so wish. And on that topic, Raylib is, I thought it was, I think it's MIT, but I don't wanna, don't Zlib. Okay, and you know, honestly, I don't actually know the difference between Zlib and MIT. When I read them, they seem to be literally identical. But uh, this has been uh, a release a long time in the coming. The uh, last release was in April. Uh, this is probably one of the more significant releases in quite a while, and this is a project that I really like. So I would recommend, if, if you're looking for media libraries, uh, input handling, audio handling, uh, obviously game graphics, 3D, that kind of stuff. And especially if you want something that is quite easy to use in the C, C++ or all of the 50 programming languages it has bindings for, I do recommend checking out Raylib. And 4.0 looks like a very nice release. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.